Hello and welcome to the Chemistry Topic Reactivity Series, Lesson 1, Metals and Carbon. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the different properties of metals. We'll look at some examples of metals and we're going to look at their reactivity and the role of carbon in this, where carbon forms falls in the reactivity series. So you've got five pictures there. Um, the first one. Uh, is a lithium battery. Then you've got sodium that has been cut and you can see it's shiny when cut. Then you've got some ground potassium, some iron wires and some a copper coil of wire. You need to be able to recognise those. Um, this second one here, the sodium, this is what you will see when it's used in a lab. You won't use it, but it will be demonstrated to you. You'll look at the reactivity of the group one metals, of which sodium is one, and see how it reacts with different um, substances. OK, so here you've got copper pans and pots and you've also got iron nuts and bolts. So a metal is a substance that can conduct electricity. It will be a good conductor and it will also conduct heat as well. Metals are found in the periodic table. They are off, the majority of metals are found on the left hand side as you look at it, uh, group one and group two. And they're also transition metals in the middle block. Um, we've talked about the conduction of electricity. They also conduct heat, so thermal energy. The majority of metals are very strong and they are shiny when cut and polished. And we saw that from the bit of sodium there that was cut. And you can see that from the copper pots and also the nuts and bolts. Now, they are arranged in such a way that the atoms are a regular arrangement. And the reason they are able to conduct electricity and to conduct heat is because they have free electrons and that enables them to be good conductors. So bearing all these properties in mind, we'll have a little look at the reactivity of metals. OK, so what you've got here in this picture is a tiny little ball of sodium. That sodium has been dropped. It would have been dropped as a, an irregular shape, a small piece into the water, and it reacts really quickly with the water and fizzes around, moves around, it fizzes, it, it shoots around um, that glass dish whilst it continues to react until the reaction is complete. Um, there's another image of the sodium when cut, and so we've got to talk, we've got to look at um, the reactivity of the different metals, and they all react differently to different substances. Now, we're not going to look at their reactions, we're going to look at their overall reactivity. So we're not going to look at specific reactions of metals with water or metals with oxygen. We're going to talk about how they're listed in what we know as the reactivity series. And you've got some metals that are extremely reactive and some that are completely unreactive. And the reactivity series lists them based on this. So at the top of the reactivity series, you have potassium and at the bottom you have gold. You also have two non-metals, carbon and hydrogen. And we're going to talk about the carbon and the position of carbon in a little bit. Now, as you go down the reactivity series, the reactivity of the metal decreases. So, for example, potassium is more reactive than magnesium, but magnesium is more reactive than aluminium. Uh, zinc is more reactive than copper. And you can go on comparing all of them like that. So potassium and sodium are very reactive and silver and gold are not. They are unreactive. So you can often find them in their natural form. Now, one of the questions you need to be able to answer is why is carbon important in the reactivity series, even though it is a non-metal? So you can work out how the metals will react with them. Now, the metals above carbon are more reactive than carbon. That means they can't be extracted by carbon. However, the metals below are less reactive than carbon and so can be extracted by, from their ores by carbon. Silver and gold, this doesn't really apply to you. It then, because they can um, occur naturally, they're not always part of an ore that you need to extract them from. So you've got an image there of the periodic table and you've got to be able to, we need to work out and know which elements can be extracted by carbon. And, 
the reactivity series that we saw in the previous slide will help us with that. So remember what we said, the metals below carbon can be extracted um, from their ores. So for example, we can use carbon to extract zinc from zinc oxide and that reaction will give us zinc and carbon dioxide. So the carbon will react with the oxygen in a reduction reaction. So the oxygen will be removed from the zinc to enable it to be extracted. So do we need to use carbon to extract gold and silver? And the answer is very simply no. We will use the carbon to extract zinc, iron and lead along with copper. And they are all less reactive than carbon, so they can be extracted by reduction. Gold and silver are unreactive, so the carbon is not required. We hope you found this chemistry lesson useful. Make sure you've hit subscribe on YouTube to get all our regular updates and videos.